Welcome to Lecture Online, and here's our third example of how to use partial fractions to come, up, to come up with a solution to an integration. Here it is again, if we try to integrate this as is, it's not going to work, so we want to write this as a sum of partial fractions. But before we can do that, we have to, uh, we have to factor the denominator. Now, since the first, uh, the x squared term does not have a 1 as a coefficient, the factoring is going to be a little bit more complicated. So let's again review how we would factor something that looks like this. Right, the technique that I like to use, so let me go ahead and write this as 2x squared plus 7x minus 4, is to separate these a little bit further, write this as 2x squared minus 4, and then take the 7 and write it as a sum of two middle terms. So there are going to be x and x there, and then I need the two coefficients in front of those two to make that work. So how do we come up with those two coefficients? Well, I know that the product of the two numbers that I need to put in here is simply the product of these two, 2 times the minus 4, which is equal to minus 8. And the sum of those two numbers, of course, must add up to the 7 right there. So what I'm looking for is two numbers. So when I multiply, I get negative 8. And when I add them, I get a positive 7. So I know that the signs need to be different because if I multiply them, one has to be negative, one has to be a plus. And when I add them, I need to get a positive 7. That means I need this number to be the biggest one. And if I multiply the two numbers together, I get minus 8. So it looks like a positive 8 and a minus 1 may do the trick because minus 1 times positive 8 gives me negative 8. And minus 1 plus a positive 8 gives me a positive 7. So that's the combination, which I can plug in here. So I can say this is minus 1x and plus 8x. And now I'm ready to go ahead and group these two together. So when I group them together and I factor out something that's common here, I can see that an x is common. I'm left with a 2 minus 1, um, 2 x minus 1. And then here I can factor out a 4, so plus 4 times, and I'm left with a 2 x minus 1. And then if I look at these two terms right here, I realize that 2 x minus 1 is common. I can factor that out. So I'm left with a 2 x minus 1 multiplied times what's left, which is an x plus 4. So I know now that I can take this denominator and factor it to make it look like that. So I can take my integrand and make it look like this. 4x minus 1 divided by these two factors right here, which is a 2x minus 1 times x plus 4. And since the denominator is simply the product of two, of two linear factors, I know then that I can write this as a over 2x minus 1 plus b over x plus 4. And now all I have to do is figure out what a and b are equal to. Again, the technique is that I'm going to multiply both the top and the bottom by a factor to make the denominator look like this one right here. So I can say, well, this is equal to a over, leave myself a little bit more room for those extra factors, uh, plus b over uh, x plus 4. And then I use a different color so you can see what I'm doing here. I'm going to now multiply both the numerator and the denominator of each of those two fractions with a factor to make it, the denominator look exactly the same as this. Since I already have a 2x minus 1, I need an x plus 4. So I multiply the denominator by x plus 4 and also multiply the numerator by x plus 4 in such a way that when I get rid of those two, I end up back with the original a over 2x minus 1. The same for the second fraction. I have an x plus 4 already, so I need a 2x minus 1. So I'll multiply this times 2x minus 1, multiply the numerator by 2x minus 1. Again, when I uh, eliminate those, I end up back with what I started with. But now what I have is I have two fractions. Both the denominator look exactly the same as this one. So now to find what a and b are equal to, notice that this here is equal to this. If I now write this over the common denominator, and let me go ahead and make a line here to make it easy to see. So now I end up at 4x minus 1 over 2x minus 1 times x plus 4. And now the right side, I'm going to write that over single denominator, which is, of course, 2x minus 1 times x plus 4. And in the numerator, I'm simply going to add these up together. So I end up with an a times x plus 4a. And on the right side, I have uh, plus uh, 2bx minus b. All right, now I see that 
the denominators are the same, that means also the numerators must be equal to the same thing, and so I have a 4x right here, minus 1, and I have an ax plus 2bx plus 4a minus b. So I can conclude, and let me use a different color so you can see, that if I take the 4x term, this must equal to ax plus 2bx added together, which means that 4 must equal to a plus 2b, because those are the coefficients of x. And now what's left? I have a minus 1 on the left side, and I have a 4a minus b on the right side, so therefore I can say that minus 1 must equal to 4a minus b, so because those two make up the constant term, and that therefore has to be equal to the minus 1 on the left side. So now I end up with two equations and two unknowns, which I can solve for one of the variables in terms of the other, and so let me go ahead and use that technique. So on the first equation, I can write that a is equal to 4 equal to 4 minus 2b, if I move the 2b over to the left side. I can then take that result and plug that into my second equation and replace a by 4 minus 2b. And when I do that, I get minus 1 equals 4 times a. a is equal to 4 minus 2b minus b. There. All right. Multiplying this out, I get minus 1 equals 16 minus 8b minus b. And moving the 16 across, I get minus 1 minus 16 equals minus 8b minus b, which is minus 9b. And so minus 17 equals minus 9b, or b is equal to 17 divided by 9. So there we go. There's our first number. b is 17 over 9. Now I can find a because I have a in terms of b. So a is equal to 4 minus 2b. And instead of b, I'll write 17 over 9. So a is equal to 4 minus 34 over 9. If I combine this, I have to write this as a, a fraction over 9. So a is equal to 36 over 9 minus 34 over 9, because 9 times 4 is 36. And so a is equal to 2 ninths. So a is equal to 2 ninths, b is equal to 17 ninths. And then I can go ahead and write this instead of this with a and b replaced by what a and b are equal to. If I then write that over here, I can say that my integral is going to be equal to the sum of two integrals. The first one is going to be the integral of a over 2x minus 1, with a being 2 ninths. So it would be 2 ninths over x, uh, 2x minus 1 dx, plus the second integral is going to be b over x plus 4, with b being 17 over 9. So that would be 17 over 9 divided by x plus 4 dx. Again, I'll draw a line here so we don't get too confused. There we go. Now I can go ahead and integrate those because those are fairly easy to integrate. I can take the 2 ninths out of the integral sign. So this is 2 over 9 times the integral of dx over 2x minus 1 plus 17 over 9 times the integral of dx over x plus 4. All right, now we need to integrate these. Now this is an easy integral to integrate because this will simply be the natural log of x plus 4. But what about here? The dx over 2x minus 1. Remember that if we substitute if u is equal to 2x minus 1, and therefore du would be equal to 2dx. And so if we're going to integrate dx over 2x minus 1, if we let u be uh, 2x minus 1, then du would be 2dx, which means we need a 2 up here in order to be able to integrate that. So I can take this 2 and bring it in here. So this would be equal to 1 9 times the integral of 2dx divided by 2x minus 1 plus 17 over 9 times the integral of dx over x plus 4. All right, so we can go ahead and get rid of this. Now we can go ahead and integrate this. So this becomes equal to 1 9 times the natural log of 2x minus 1 plus 17 9 times the natural log of x plus 4, and of course we still need our constant integration, and there is the result of our integral. So instead of trying to integrate this, write it as the sum of two fractions, find out what a and b are equal to, then substitute this by the two fractions, and then integrate each one of them at a time. And of course, don't forget, you always need a differential in the numerator here in order to integrate the 2x minus 1. You'll need a 2dx in the numerator. And that's how we do that.